One second. Okay, so I feel like every single time we're gonna start the intro to these videos, I always have to drink like a liter of water. For some reason, my throat is just always dry whenever I go to start filming. Anyways, so in this week's episode of my Travel Diary series, my wife and I took a day trip out to the northern coast of Fukui. So this was a day filled with so many incredible sights. The northern coast of Fukui is really such a beautiful place. I absolutely loved it up there. Now, in saying that, there was a few moments that would maybe make your skin crawl. I mean, I know mine did at the time. So yeah, let's get into it. So we hopped in the car to take a small road trip out to the northern coastal area of Fukui and I gotta say, the views along the way were absolutely incredible. I feel like no matter where you look when driving in countryside Japan, there is just so many amazing scenic views. I feel like I could actually just spend the day enjoying just a nice drive around the countryside. The whole time we were driving, I felt like I just couldn't put my phone away because I felt like I would miss something. Like, seriously, I took so much footage just driving out to the northern coast. But really, it was such an amazing drive. I feel like the countryside here is just absolutely stunning. So we could tell that we were getting pretty close to our first stop for the day when we reached this small little seaside town. And where we were going was very noticeable by this big red bridge. The sights and sounds just being on this bridge were absolutely incredible. Looking over the edge, you could see that the water here was actually really clear as well. So the island that this bridge is connected to is called Oshima Island, and how amazing is this entrance? Seeing this made me so excited to start exploring this island. I also took quite a few photos of the entrance to Oshima Island because, I mean, it just looks absolutely amazing. The lanterns and these Kumainu lion dog statues just had such amazing detail in them. So just past this big toddy gate, there was also this map here that shows a small hiking trail around Oshima Island and has a few things listed that you can actually see along the way. So to walk around the outside of Oshima Island only takes about an hour as well, so it's not very big. Now the stairs here leading up to the start of the hiking trail were quite steep. Although the weather on this day was actually quite hot, so just being here under the trees was actually really refreshing. So we decided to start the trail by heading off here to the right. The sound of nature in this little forest on Oshima Island was just so peaceful. So we ended up coming to this little fork in the hiking trail here. Now the left side here did look a little bit ominous so we decided to go right again. I remember walking through here and thinking that Oshima Island is just such a peaceful place.
Once we made it back out of the trees, the views from here were really amazing. And this also took us to the first stop on the hiking trail. So the sign here explains that due to the magnetic nature of the rocks, compasses actually don't work here. I mean, not like you would actually need a compass out on Oshima Island anyway, it's really not big enough to actually get lost. So we decided to head back into the forest to continue exploring Oshima Island. Now, as peaceful as Oshima Island is, I must say it is definitely not going to be for everyone. And the reason I say that is because the further we went in, the more I started to realize that Oshima Island is full of spiders. Big spiders. Like this one here. So seeing a branch like this that was hanging down quite low that I knew I would have to duck under was somewhat scary, knowing that these are everywhere. So I had to put my camera away for just a brief moment while I did a super commando roll to get under that branch because there was no way I was going to go under there slowly. Now, to outside viewers, it probably looked like I ran under there like a little girl, but I swear I definitely did a super commando roll and it was very manly. So even though it was actually quite a hot day, it kind of felt pretty good being back out under the sun. And I must say, I was starting to feel pretty itchy seeing all those spiders. But the view here was definitely worth it. Something about the waves crashing against the rocks just made me instantly forget about those eight-legged spawns of Satan. So moving on to the next location, the back of the island didn't really have any shade at all, so it was actually starting to get quite hot. Although there was this very useful sign here, so we knew that we were still on the right track. And all thanks to that sign, we ended up making it to the next stop on the trail. Now this sign here actually shows how the water filters down the island and collects on the rocks down below. So the rocks in this location are actually filled with fresh water because of the way it filters down from the top of the island. Although we couldn't really find the exact area where the water does collect, and the rocks here were a little bit dicey to walk over, so we decided to just head to the next location. And this is where we actually headed back into the forest. And I gotta say, the branches here could not have been lower. I had to crouch down so low just to walk under these. Now it wasn't really too much further in after coming back into the forest that we reached this old shrine, which this shrine is actually dedicated to the deities of the seeds. Now this shrine might not be as visually stunning as some other shrines that I've seen, but the location just makes the whole thing just come together to make it such a peaceful place. And just across from the shrine there was this toddy gate that led out to just such an incredible view. This was well worth battling through all of those spiders for sure. It was just absolutely amazing. Now just past the shrine there was actually also this old abandoned structure which kind of looked as though it might have been an old house.
as well as what appeared to be an old broken Tori gate. which actually took us back to the stairs that we entered from, which actually means that if you wanted to come to this shrine on Oshima Island, you could just go up the stairs and head to the left. You don't have to worry about battling through all of those spiders to come and see the shrine, and it's definitely still gonna be well worth it because it really was such an amazing place. So after Oshima Island, we took a short walk through this little town here. So just on the other side of this little town, there's a seaside nature park, which we wanted to stop at for our next stop of the day. Although the weather was quite hot, it was a really nice walk through all of these little back streets. And just before the park, there were all of these trees that were growing on an angle because of all of the strong winds coming from the sea. So this park was actually further away than we'd expected and soon after arriving there was again so many spiders here and the park itself was actually a lot bigger than we expected and we were starting to get pretty hungry at this point so we decided that we'd just head back to the car and move on to the next stop of the day where we would also be having lunch. We were definitely moving on because we were hungry not because of all of the spiders that were there. So our next stop for the day was actually not too far from Oshima Island at a place called Tojimbo. Now Tojimbo is filled with a lot of really nice places to eat and it's mostly all seafood that's all found locally. So we looked around for a little while to try and find somewhere to eat but we just so happened to be here on a day where a lot of the places were actually shutting early and while we were looking around we did pass this very impressive tanuki statue. Seriously anyone know why the tanuki are like this because I personally have no idea. So we ended up having an amazing lunch at this place called Kominamite and this Negitoradon was so good. So Negitoradon, for those of you that don't know, is basically just minced tuna sashimi. So it's not like canned tuna, it's proper fresh tuna and it was so good. It was actually my first time ever having it. I'd seen it on menus before but always thought it was maybe like canned tuna and I'm not a big fan of canned fish. But yeah, the fact that it was just minced sashimi made it absolutely amazing. It was really, really nice. Now, Tojimbo is such an amazing place. And because all of the seafood here is all caught locally, it's just so fresh and it all tastes just amazing. So Tojimbo is also on the edge of a cliff. So after lunch, we made our way down to the cliff's edge which also had a really nice view of Oshima Island from here. I really do like Dojimbo a lot. Now, this is actually not my first time here either. So the first time I ever came here was back in December of 2019, just before COVID. The sounds of the waves crashing against the cliff's edge is just so relaxing. I could quite comfortably just spend the whole day right here, just taking it all in. As the sun was starting to come down, we decided to head a little further down the cliff. Now, I didn't actually know this until doing a little bit of reading, but the cliffs here are actually a result of volcanic rock from millions of years ago that was reshaped by the waves crashing against them over time. And this would have to be my favorite spot in all of Tojimbo. Unfortunately, we did have to start heading back soon, but this spot would have been absolutely amazing to watch the sun set from here. I honestly could not recommend this place more highly if you're ever in or near the Fukui area. And with that, we started heading back. I really don't think I'll get over just how stunning the scenery is driving in countryside Japan. The rice fields coupled with the mountains off in the distance just look so incredible. And that just about wraps up this week's episode of my travel diary series. I really do hope that you enjoyed this video. I absolutely love the coastal area of Fukui. It really is amazing. And I really do hope that all of those spiders didn't put you off wanting to visit Oshima Island because it really is such an incredible place. 
Now, in next week's episode of my Travel Diary series, we'll be taking a walk through the countryside as well as visiting a like flower garden park as well, which was really nice. And again, I would really like to hear your thoughts and opinions on today's video in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this video, it would really help me out a lot if you would hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And you could also click that notification bell to stay up to date with my future videos. So yeah, that's it for this week's episode, and I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye for now.